Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going to revisit just briefly the Starlink satellites that were influenced by the, the minor geomagnetic storm. I think I found something that may have also influenced the satellites that, that came back down to the Earth on February the 4th. In fact, the satellites are still coming back down to Earth. There were, there were 40 satellites that were significantly impacted by a minor geomagnetic storm. I want to show you guys something else I found that may have influenced those satellites. Also in this video, we're going to Hay River, Canada, which is in the upper latitudes of northern Canada, a bizarre circle in the nighttime sky, encompassing the entire sky, in fact. She said it was too big to photograph. We're going to Lexington, South Carolina, where a high-speed fireball was captured on video. And we're going to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we've got yet another sighting of that incredible, what looked like a propeller moving through the nighttime sky, visible across the central plains. And it's also now been captured on video out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're going to come back and take a look at those here in just a moment. But first, here at the website, quick look at the Planetary K Index. And you can see right now as we are doing this video, there is a minor geomagnetic storm underway, very similar to the storm that occurred on February the 4th. Coming over to the Space Weather Prediction Center, looking at the GOES X-ray flux, this would show us any large solar flares in the last 72 hours, and there have been none. Small activity, but nothing large. Looking at the Earth-facing side of the sun, you can see some sunspots facing the Earth. And looking at this complex up here, if there were to be any solar flares come from that region, at least right now, they definitely would be Earth-directed. I want to take you guys now up to Hay River, Canada. This is up in the Northwestern Territory. This is something so bizarre. Uh, Tanya said she'd never seen this either in the nighttime sky, and she's a, a sky watcher in northern Canada. On the night she took this video, the moon was at a 59% waxing gibbous on February the 9th. You're going to see the moon in this video. On the 9th, once again, video by Tanya N. That's the moon. She looked up and she saw this big giant circle encompassing the entire night sky. She said it was so big, she couldn't take a photo of it. She took this incredible video. That's a 360 degree video of the entire night sky. I've never seen that involving the moon. And not only that, it's not a full moon. Usually this involves the bright sun. And when you do see this involving the sun, it's quite rare. You don't see this very often. So to see this with a moon that's a 59% waxing gibbous, this is quite rare. And again, Tanya is a seasoned sky watcher. She had never seen anything like that. And I got to be honest, I never have either, especially involving the moon. We have another sighting of the incredible spiral that was spotted across the central plains uh, back on the 31st. Here's yet another video sighting of that spiral from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, sent in by Adam. And you can see the, the date and time are the exact date and time the other photos were taken from the other witnesses across the central plains. The insert up here is from Tennessee. This is a video by Adam from Pittsburgh. And he said it started out as a bright point of light. And the further it moved across the sky, it turned into a vapor cloud. It's not quite as dramatic as you see up there because it was cloudy in his location at the time of the video. Once again, out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, near the East Coast. The photos I got were mostly from Tennessee, Missouri, Texas, and I got a couple out of the Florida Panhandle. Once again, this is over on the East Coast, but you can see it was cloudy on that night, but he was still able to, to see the phenomena in the nighttime sky and capture an incredible video. Thank you, Adam. Greatly appreciate that. I want to take you guys now over to the American Meteor Society, and we're looking for major fireball events on the night of February the 8th along the East Coast of the United States. And looking at the reports over here at the American Meteor Society, you can see reports out of Louisiana, Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Texas on the night of the 8th, and then also a major event over in the UK and parts of Northern and Western Europe. Also a major event on February the 9th involving Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee, but nothing aligning with the video footage you're about to see out of Lexington, South Carolina on February the 8th of 2022. Video sent in by Reba R., at 8.33 p.m., this was picked up on her ring cam on the front of their house. Watch this ultra high speed object right over this tree line right here. This is the original video at original speed. 
Look at that. The only thing I do is zoom in on this thing. I don't adjust the speed. I don't even adjust the lighting or color in any way. This is exactly how it was sent to me. Like I said, I just zoom in closer. This thing came out of nowhere, moving left to right across the screen appears to have a tail but that could be a digital artifact not 100 percent sure on that but it's moving way too fast to be a helicopter moving way too fast to be a plane looks like a single point of light just i mean moving through the sky at several thousand miles per hour again this video is at regular speed this is not fast forward like you think it would be that's not fast forward that is the original speed here i go ultra zoom without getting too overly pixelated again very high speed object moving through the skies of lexington south carolina on the night of February 8th of 2022. Did anybody else see that? That's why I went to the American Meteor Society because I figured something that large, that bright, may have been reported or seen by other people. And second, it was at 8.33 p.m., so it wasn't like it was during the overnight hours. There were still people up, but that thing was moving incredibly fast. Great video by Reba out of Lexington, South Carolina. Want to revisit now the SpaceX launch of the Starlink satellite back on the 4th. There was a minor geomagnetic storm as this launch was underway or as the, the satellites were getting up to low Earth orbit, kind of like we see today. In fact, it's identical to what we see today. And the IMF, the Interplanetary Magnetic Field, that's this BZ line that's generated by the sun. And when this thing tilts south, the magnetic shield weakens. And I want to talk about that for a second because a minor geomagnetic storm should not have influenced those satellites like that. This is a G1 storm. That's not very strong, to be honest. But if you look at the IMF, the Interplanetary Magnetic Field, and if we go and look on February the 4th, which I went back in time over here at spaceweather.com, you can look at the archives, look at the IMF on February the 4th, and you can see it was indeed tilted south. So with the Interplanetary Magnetic Field tilting south which it does from time to time and it's unpredictable because that is influenced by the sun so when it tilts south it weakens the magnetic shields so i guess what i'm getting at is that weak storm really shouldn't have been strong enough to influence the satellites like that but since the imf the interplanetary magnetic field was south it could have strengthened it just enough to interfere with the satellite functions the way that it did. There's a well-written article over here at spaceweather.com that talks about it, and it talks about the IMF pointing south, a condition scientists call southward BZ. When the IMF tilts south, it can partially cancel Earth's magnetic field at the point of contact. So what if those satellites were near or at the point of contact where the Earth's magnetic field was temporarily and partially canceled due to a south tilting interplanetary magnetic field. It's just something I wanted to put out there because I can't imagine a G1 geomagnetic storm influencing 40 satellites like that unless there was something else influencing the storm. And it's just a thought, but I do think that the south pointing IMF, which does weaken the magnetic shields, at least temporarily, could have been enough to influence those satellites and cause them to come back down to the earth. Also in this video, I've got a brand new picture slideshow, new sky phenomena photos sent up all around the world. Dale out of Fort Lupton, Colorado, unedited fiery orange sky from Fort Lupton. That is unbelievable. Another photo here by Jeff B. out of Chillicothe, Ohio. Looks like a triangle craft setting off in the distance over there. And yet another one here by Kevin out of Cedar Swamp, South Carolina. Both photos unedited. And these next photos were sent in by Kurt out of Los Angeles, California of a crescent moon off in the western sky visible from Los Angeles, California. Photo here sent in by Steve K. out of Iowa. I believe this is a sunrise. Big, bright red sunrise. Bethany, Connecticut. Anita and Corey. Yet another jumbo halo. This one off on the horizon at either sunrise or sunset. New Brunswick, Canada. Luke C. What looks like white licorice spanning out across the sky. Get a load of those spirals, would you? Incredible photos. Great job, guys. Keep the photos coming. If you have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. Thanks for watching. Have a super day, and be safe out there.